Welcome to Land Academy. I'm Jack Butella. I'm Jill DeWitt. We show you how to buy real estate for half of what it's worth. And sell it on the internet really fast. We, we are, are Jack, Jack and Jill, Jill and, this and this is, is the Jack, Jack and Jill, Jill show, show too. With over 15,000 completed transactions, we're the experts at acquiring property. Of all kinds, not just land. For half price and flipping them for way more. All right, let's get this show started. Jack Butella and Jill DeWitt. Hi. Welcome to our show today. In this episode, Jill and I talk about how we're light years ahead of house rehabbers. First, before we get into it, let's take a question posted by one of our members on the landacademy.com online community. It's free. Okay. Eric Held asked, looking in a rather sizable county, I'm looking for ways of staying away from certain parts of the county that don't look so promising. I see two possible ways right off, and I was wondering if anyone had tried them and what they thought. In CoreLogic, you could enter as a criteria school district and also mailing zip. Oh, Eric. My concern about mailing zip is that it might rule out some undeveloped areas. Yeah. However, as best I know, there isn't a square foot of property in any county that isn't placed in a zip code (laughs) area. That's true. Even if there's no mail delivery. Anyway, what about using those criteria for narrowing down the search in a large county? Is there a better way of telling CarLogic that I'm interested in these areas, but not that? Okay, Jill knows this. These are my favorite kind of questions. Totally. They're data ba- data-driven questions that, yeah. and there's a solution. So let's let's deconstruct this, and I'll try to be not boring and brief. Okay. If I fall asleep, you know, you know, you know, you did, you know, you <laughs> lost a lot not, of people. Don't fall backwards here. Okay, okay? And I won't fall backwards. We're both going to go swimming today. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> If the audio quality isn't up to what you're used to, by the way, it's because Jill picked a spot where we're almost smack on the beach. (laughs) (laughs) And the waves are right behind us. And it's kind of nice. It's so pretty. This show is the best way to avoid work there ever was. This is very true. Let's take a look at how you would and why you would sort data spatially. So, and what's behind it. The zip codes, for instance, in my opinion, are not a good way to, to, uh, to really... They're, they're not a good criteria for, for what we do. Zip codes are set up for, by the federal government to, for mail delivery and efficiency routes and stuff. It has right. nothing to do with value or, or uh, property type. So, great. You're going to look for a sizable county. Um, the school district, same thing. I mean, it's really, it's kind of like a congressional district. It's not, it's all mapped out for a bunch of other reasons that we don't care about. What we care about <laughs> is the assessor's parcel number scheme. Out, out west, they call it an index map. So you can really tell where more valuable property or less valuable property based on assessor value. And we all know that that's not how we price it, right? Exactly. So it stick with the assessor parcel number schemes. And all over the country, they call it something different. Out here, it's called an index map. So that's how you really um, find lower and higher values in, a, in any given county. I've, I've, you know what? That'd be really cool. I just thinking sometime. I don't know if you want to draw it out for these folks, but that, now that we have video, we could actually draw some like stuff out. Exactly. But it's so interesting because I've, um, we've, we've done this for people where Jack has got up with a pen, and yeah. and and shown an index map exactly. and shown what he's talking about and like the 101s to 10, you know, the 101 beginning of the APN scheme is, you know. Price you should price it this way, and the 103 you should price it that way. Yeah, for, it's I mean, so for cool. sake of argument, let's say a county, any county, uh, it's a the scheme goes like this: 101-11-1111, like a phone number. Mm-hmm. All right, so, and it begins with 101. Maybe they're the oldest properties that got subdivided, or the newest. We don't know. Right. And then it goes to 102, and then 202, and then 909, and on and on. So, those are all. Pr- Based on who has subdivided the property, the assessor does it that way, and it's it's a, it's shocking when you look at the look at the data in a spreadsheet, which is I pref- I prefer to look at it that way. Other people prefer to look at it spatially, so you look at an actual map and say, oh, over here is where that city is, you know, this is where Phoenix is, and there's a m- ton of APNs in there, but those are very expensive because it's urban, right. it's uh, urban, but out the outlying areas though, that's 303. That's pr- and if you hang around at uh, a county office long enough. You'll hear people say that. Oh, that's uh, the 303 area, or mm-hmm. that's the 302 area. We don't care about that. Or that's the 102 area. Yeah, we have to pick up uh, garbage there. And <laughs> so, and so yeah. it's that actually, Julie, it brings a great po- brings the, up the great point because it, that's the whole point of this. Mm-hmm. You're looking at data the way that it's cut up, 
and it makes sense to value property that way. Uh, and Eric, this is a great question, by the way. I don't, yeah. We're not busting your busting your chops here. <laughs> um, but zip codes, I've done, I've been down all, all those paths, and uh, it just doesn't tie in. Zip codes, congressional districts, census tracts. Uh, cens- if you look at census tracts, the, the federal government goes from A, B, C to D. Basically, how good the neighborhood is. Mm-hmm. Really, I mean, it's ironic, but that they do that. But that doesn't necessarily mean property values. Are, like, look at, think of Harlem. Harlem's a very expensive property, but it's probably a D census tract. Right. Stick with the assessor and you'll be fine. <laughs> I think we have a whole show on that coming up. Uh, I think we do. <laughs> <laughs> if you have a question or you want to be in the show, how was that? Was that boring? That was great. No, you did awesome. Thank you. But I do think you're right, spatially. We were just in Santa Barbara, mm-hmm. and we took pictures of the of the index maps on the wall because they're right. hanging. And that really proves the whole point, so we should it stick does. with that Santa Barbara theme. and Keep uh, showing. Yeah. Exactly. If you have a question or you want to be in the show, reach out to either one of us on landacademy.com, soon to be landinvestors.com, by the way. Today's topic, and this is the meat of the show, why all of us land people are light years ahead of house rehabbers. If that's not obvious, (laughs) Jill's going to have a blast with this. Oh, no. it's just Jill's done both. Uh, Let's talk to her. We've rehabbed houses. Yeah. We've wholesaled houses. And we've purchased and sold land. Which do you prefer? Let me think. The one where I don't have to sit there and babysit it. The one where I don't worry about a roof leaking. The one I won't have to, to you know, let someone in and show them around. Um, it's land. I prefer to make money, not lose it. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> and I prefer oh. to do it from my desk, not um, in dust. It's funny. You know, uh, my uh, I'm getting more and more photos in my Facebook feed. Um, I'm sure you are, too. With people showing before and after yeah. and rehab projects and all that good stuff. And I'm like, oh, gosh. It's just For me, it's just like, oh, it looks painful. You know what I say every time I see that? What? In the comments. What do you say? This is why we buy land, period. And then I just That's a great it. idea. <laughs> I should start doing that. Wow. How Those much? guys. Put, have- how much did that delay cost? <laughs> I would like to think that I have a relatively larger set, relatively large, larger set of kahunas. And, I am uh, not commenting on that <laughs> one. Oh my gosh! So, but I see these guys buying these houses, and it's uh-huh. like they were, they should be burned down. Yes. And then they make them okay. Oh my I goodness! I know. I've so well, I don't. My hats off to those guys because I can't even. Don't have the with stomach. That. Yeah. You know, like you said, I, I I love coming back to one of our one of our um, people in our community said, "I've never lost twenty thousand dollars on a land deal." Yeah. Have and you? I'm like, have that you was ever great. lost any? Have nope, any money not ever. like oh gosh, not like that. Mm-mm, no, I don't think no. I. I mean, you know, I don't think maybe way back when. No, no. The only time I've I didn't ever make lost as much as I wanted to. That's I've done that. You know what? I haven't answered this question in a while. Have I ever lost money in a land deal? And the answer is yes. And here's why: you buy a bunch of property, maybe from separate owners, and it's all packaged up, and then you sell it to one person because they say, "Here's a couple hundred mm. thousand bucks. I want all this property." And so you make a ton of money on the whole. Right. But a couple of lots in there, if you look at it on a per acre, per square foot, or however you value it, you might say, oh, yeah, I'm losing money on those three. But the, on it, it doesn't but matter. the whole deal, the whole deal, exactly. you make it some dough. Mm-hmm. So what are your thoughts? I, you know, I just think that it's so glaringly obvious. Well, you know what? It's not glaringly obvious. Look at, look at the, you know, the guy, Dennis, that we deal with in Scottsdale, where we wholesale houses to him. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he has, wants no part of data. That's true. And he loves he loves that we buy a property, buy a house, mark it up 10000 bucks, and sell it to him. And then he makes, you know, he probably makes fifty to 80000 bucks a deal. Right. You know, I'm sure there's a few um, rehabbers out there that are in it for different reasons. Like, we have a friend who does stuff in Detroit, remember? And yeah. it's like, it's, um, it's like a charity-based Thing. Oh right, yeah, yeah. sure. It's got to be. So true. there are some people Non-profit that real estate exactly, which that is are a dichotomy in, in a phrase. But I whatever. know. <laughs> <laughs> but but he's in it for a whole different reason. So you know, hats off to him. He's yeah. really trying to better the community and give people homes. You know, he he is rehabbing. He lives in Hollywood. You know, yeah. He lies to Detroit. It's actually, it's funny. He's trying to better that neighborhood, and then when he can't stand being in that neighborhood any longer, he comes, he comes back to right Hollywood. back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's never there very long. <laughs> I'm gonna get so much email for yeah. that. I can so, say this stuff because I'm from Detroit, by the way. True, but it's so interesting. But, but, I, I, yeah, I know. I still, 
we are light. It's funny. We are one one uh, individual at a time. There, there's several rehabbers finding us, going, "Oh my gosh, yeah. thank you. I'm so glad I found you." And we love it because they've seen the other side, the dark side. We have a couple of <laughs> members who have. They're wrapping up their their home flipping renovating career, mm-hmm. and they're with us. And we get comments like this every, at least every week, usually more. If I could just sell this house in Tennessee, I could yes. actually purchase all the land yes. and flip it and double and triple my money exactly. uh, that I sent letters out on. Right. Do you want to buy the house? Exactly. Isn't that crazy? No, Mike, I don't. Right. <laughs> oh, I know. Remember, remember, you did a blog one time, and I loved it. And it was like, um, you know, what I could do, how you, what, how you could do, a hundred, what you could turn $100,000 into. You could turn $100,000 oh, yeah. into 200000 in land. Double right. it, get out, oh, and then with a uh, a home, a flip, you could turn a hundred thousand into maybe hundred thirty thousand. Or one twenty. Exactly. I mean, may, yeah, maybe th- one thir- Once, w- if you make twenty grand on a house flip, you're doing everything right. Right. That's what I think. Exactly. If you're a real estate agent, it's a little bit more because the fees you don't have to spend as much. But man, by the time they get done with you, especially if you finance it, you're just asking for it. Well, right, right there to me, that's that's glaringly obvious. Yeah. What, why why hit my head against the wall in something where I can maybe make 20, 30, 40% when I'm serious? Do you I realize that, that sentence? I know. Like 20, 30, 40% is unheard it's of. It's actually really great. I know. <laughs> like 5%. We have people in our group that, yeah. that are relatively new that complain about doubling their money. I know. It's funny. They're like, oh, man. I, I, I f- remember that time that guy said it was so cute. I failed. We're like, all right, how bad? What were the numbers? You're serious, too. He was totally thought he bombed. And when he gave us all the numbers, we was like, wait a minute. That's 90%. Oh you gosh. almost doubled your money, and he said, yeah, I know, I failed. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the heck? Perspective, everyone. <laughs> yeah, you really have to have uh, mm. You have to undo a lot of things that we've been taught in real estate for all our lives. You know, we, we all grow up watching our parents buy and sell their house and ha- get a big check. And right. It's just such a different deal. It's, and I'm not, I don't mean that times have changed. I just mean that when you do it versus if it's not your primary residence, you do it as a business. Right. You have to really it's different maximizing price on each deal it shouldn't be your goal right and most of this in fact all of the extremely successful people the members in our um, our group understand that yeah you know what we had this meetup recently somebody asked me real they, I, I asked them to ask the toughest questions they could yeah and one person asked me okay great there's whatever 240 people in your group and i know you're capping it at 250 but how many really that was, How many really that was a good question. are like, you know, quit their jobs and, you know, all the crap that you guys claim. Right. Is it real? And I, we did, we looked into it a little bit mm-hmm. and I bought 70. Yeah. 70 to 80. The rest, uh, some people buy it and use it as a doorstop. That just happens. I and mean, those people are weeding themselves out, by the way. In fact, yeah. we're, I can see, we can see who pulls the data. Yeah. And uses the tools and we're contacting them saying, you clearly don't want to do this. Yeah. There's some people out there who do want to do it. Exactly. What do you say? Let's uh, make we just way call for it them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. So I don't yeah. know. We're probably at 50. Per, well, that's not quite 50 percent, but probably 30. I think 40 percent. 30, 40 is a good number. Yeah. That's a pretty high number, also. If you have questions, really tough questions, like stuff you've just crass questions for us. Crass. <laughs> crass. Crass. Really crass questions. What like, does crass you know, mean? I know. Crass is like vulgar and just oh. you know oh yeah yeah on, like man. i haven't heard that word in gosh grass okay <laughs> you want to hear some more 50s words no <laughs> <laughs> you know you want to hear some crass words wait, wait, i'm wait. very capable oh, of crass wait. words shucks what's this third oh man what's there's a there's a saying that you say and I, I like it he split yes that's it yeah there's that's your 50 no but that's your that's one of your 50s sayings i love it <laughs> but do you have any crass questions yeah let us know. Uh, Reach out to Jack directly, <laughs> not Jill. Well, here's another question then. And all the this. positive stuff, reach out to Jill. <laughs> if you, this is my favorite question. Okay. If you guys are so good at this and it's so profitable, well, then why the hell are you in front of a camera right now <laughs> instead of behind your desk doing more deals? Because this is more fun. <laughs> <laughs> that's not my answer, but oh, that's great. Okay. My answer is we're here, Land Academy and land investors in general, we're here, we're doing this to create business partners. Mm-hmm right? It's true. We could just not have a a website at all. It's true. And still do probably okay. Still eat okay. We could have been under the radar forever. Yeah, we were for years and years. Just in the last couple of years, we turned the cameras on. So 
And here's an, here's an example. We have a, one, a couple of, one guy in our group is a former commissioner for a county. And anything that we want to do in that county with him as a partner, it gets done. Are we doing anything illegal or not transparent? No, but no. it's just, you, it, the, that's the way the world works. Yeah. If, and if you want to argue with that, this isn't for you. <laughs> <laughs> we won't let you in our group because that's how the world works. If you're on no, a first name kidding. basis with somebody at a county for, and for good reason and good standing, you're going to get a bunch of stuff done that maybe someone else yeah. isn't, uh, doesn't have a first well, name basis. Well, not even just that. He knows the process. He knows how they work. Even yeah. if every it's all legit, he just says, I, kn- I already know you need to call Bob for this and Mike for that and whatever. And he's 30 years of experience too. Yeah. So there's I could run down a list of probably 20 people who have an incredible experience in our group like that. Mm-hmm. And so we're getting stuff done. Exactly. Join us in another episode where Jack and Jill discuss how to use information, that's me. And inspiration, that's me. Just about anything you want. We use it every day to buy property for half of what it's worth and sell it immediately. You are not alone in your real estate ambition. I like tough questions. Yeah. That was really... Do you have any tough questions? You know what? You talk to members more than me on the phone. Yeah. Do they ask you real tough questions, or can you think of some good questions that you love to answer that that you could, that you somebody know, who's listening to this can benefit from, so that you don't have to answer it? I, I, Go ahead. I had some the other day, and my favorite questions are really because um, I love when people really ask me what's what's down deep, and why are you, number one is you know you know why are you guys doing this? You know you like mm-hmm. you said we could be doing other things. You didn't have to share this with everybody. And and we t- I talked to this guy the other day and he had he listens to fun. the show. I they love that answer, Jill. <laughs> I know. That's perfect. <laughs> Thank you. You're doing it because it's fun. I'm doing it because it's more profitable. Thank you. But it you was would be lucky so people to find a partner like Jill. Thank you. Techie, brainy weirdos like me. We're, we're lucky. We're a good team. Yeah. Yep. And it, it was so cool because um, he's listened to the show and he said he answered he. He answered some of the question before I even could, and one of the reasons was I, I, I love seeing other people succeed. You know, I really, really do. Yeah. So that's that's part of it for me. And the other question that I really, really like is, you know, by sharing this, are you giving away, you know, some of your own bottom line, your own profits? You just you just told your, your whole business model question. to 200 and however many people, probably I don't know how many hundred people by now, that we've told our business before we formalized well. it. Or and Everybody's here, <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> and a couple thousand downloads a day. <laughs> so it's more than that. Wow. Uh, but uh, <laughs> so I looked at that recently. It's staggering. Oh, cool. So I uh, kind of funny. So anyway, uh, you know, you're sharing your your stuff, and you know, you uh, there's a potential of people stepping on each other's toes and taking properties that you might you might have bought. I'm like, oh no, and it's so nice because I can say no, I can say. There's enough to go around. Trust me, yeah. we've all done the math, and and oh it's great gosh. because I say, look, have you met my friend Jack? So, as I, I, a lot of uh, I, I told, I shared with him how by the time it gets to me, there's so much research done and everything that I don't even have to think about it. So when you came to oh, me yeah, and yeah. said, I really think we should do this land academy thing. You know, there, I know that you did all the math to make sure it's not going to mess with our business plans yeah. or our business model or our bottom line. Yeah. And if anything, it has totally enhanced oh, it in so Absolutely. many ways. We've created partners. We have. We have and, and we're all doing bigger and better deals exactly. together. Information and inspiration to buy undervalued property. We, we are, are Jack and Jill, and, Jill, and this, this was, was the Cash Flow from, from Land, land show. show. We are the experts at acquiring property. Of all kinds, not just land. For half price, just so we can flip it for way more. And really fast. Thanks for listening. You are not alone in your real estate ambition.